hi and welcome to the Data Strategy Gurus podcast, live again from Click World here in Las Vegas. I'm joined by Jan uh, Birkholz from Merwerke and we're going to go into the topic of process mining. Jan, can you explain a bit what is your role at Merwerke and what Merwerke is in fact doing with data? Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Jan Birkholz. My role at, uh, at Merwerke is basically to um, understand the client's needs and then uh, to see if our offer, if our solution can implement um, help yeah, and can yeah. support can support the de designed or the desired outcome uh, of the client and can help understanding the process basically, help understanding the internal processes in order to optimize those. Yeah, optimize the processes and you're pulling in the data into click sense. Uh, that's what you're doing. Maybe you can show me around a bit on, on what you're doing with the product and how it all works and, and what process mining in itself really is about. Okay, there were quite a lot of questions. <laughs> Let's start with the beginning. That is already where we will, not where we will end, but where the ready application is. Maybe let's start one or two steps before and let's see where process mining comes from and what process mining is. So process mining is basically an automatic, automatic way of rebuilding a process. Yeah. yeah. And you're building it not based on interviews like you were doing it before with classical uh, process analysis oh, yeah. or questionings mm -hmm. yeah, and drawing a map. It's actually looking at digital footprints in the source systems and re restructuring and remodeling the actual process automatically. So you're taking that out of the systems, if I understand? Yes. So the engineered IT systems based upon the first slide, what you just showed about typically what we do, process mapping and designing that. Yes. And then you go in, this is how it should work. But mostly you have designed the IT systems and nobody knows again how the process really works. Actually, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Yeah. So the thing is, you, you draw your map, you then derive actions, what you want to change. Yeah. And no one knows if that worked out. Oh yeah. How do you measure it? Mm -hmm. You don't have process mining. With process mining, you have a continuous cycle of loading the data. Yeah. So you have your picture, you derive your actions, mm -hmm. you implement the actions and you have a closed loop of controlling yeah. what has been done. You can benchmark what you did in order to see if that turned out to be good or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is what, what process mining can bring to the table. Yeah. yeah, you're really following up. If you change something in the process, what is the impact, what is the result, and keeping track of what you changed that is really having the desired effect. Yeah, and, and the thing is you get away from this subjective. Because the classical process analysis is always somehow subjective. It's always gut feeling. It's always the people that are around the company for 30 plus years. Yeah. They're saying, oh, this process is working good or this process is not going good. Now we have the first time that we can sit on the table and have an objective view together and decide where to start. Because we can quantify how often something did go wrong, how long it did take. And then we just order and organize where we start with the improvement. Yeah. Yeah. So from the first time we can uh, apply an analytical way of process improvement. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's what process mining really can help with. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. So I'm trying to get that clear as well, how it now works uh, com uh, compared to before and, and what you're bringing to yeah. the table as, as an extra value by pulling that into ClickSense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Maybe for the audience who haven't seen process mining before and now thinking there's maybe a lot to bring to being able to analyze it. Yeah. Actually, that's the nice beauty about process mining. No matter what process, you might think, what is a process? What is a process? So your, your company is full of processes. You are working inside of processes every day in your everyday work. So mm -hmm. if it's a purchasing process, a sales process, production process, finance process, ticketing process when your computer gets jammed. All processes follow certain patterns, certain activities, certain steps. Yeah. And exactly that is what we extract. And those activities may reside of different systems throughout an end-to-end -end process. And what we do is then extract those and harmonize those in a one so-called event log. And yeah. this event log brings together all the information for one end-to-end -end process. And it is always clustered with a leading case ID. In this case, it's a purchase order. 
Yeah. And so you see, you have many lines. So in actual, in this case, six lines for one purchase order number. Yeah. So yes. 10. And you have different activities occurring. So create purchase order item, record goods received, till clear invoice. Then the purchase order is completed. Mm -hmm. And attached to it, because we are having an event log, your system automatically, every system does that, tracks the timestamp. Yeah, most of systems. Every leading system that needs to be audited has exactly. it, because yeah. otherwise you can't be audited. And what we do now is we automatically derive this process model. And this process model, very, very important. No one touched it. No one told anyone where which activity will be. The activity is automatically being ordered and clustered based on the input of the event log. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because when we go back to the classical process analysis where you draw a map, you define mm -hmm. at which stage which activity comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not here. So you see, in fact, what the activity was that happened, the event that happened, mm -hmm. and this is what you're logging, and based upon the order of the events, you define the process map. The algorithms do, yeah, we yeah. don't. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. This is this is the solution what you build, in fact. Yes, okay, yeah. exactly. And then we will come back to what we are seeing here. So here we are having now a process dashboard. Yeah. And the dashboard tells us how many cases are in the application, how many activities are in here. Yeah. Yeah. So one case can hold many activities. And now it, this is important. It has 8,675 variants. Now, what is a variant? A variant is a distinct order and sequence of activities. So many cases can follow the same sequence. Yes. And that would be, of course, desirable. We define a process to be good or not, and we try that every actual process follow that sequence. Yes. Okay. This is actual data. This so is we have 8,600 different process, process variants that we are following. But as we are clustering it automatically, we see here the top 10 process variants. Yeah, the top 10 of those 8,000 we are seeing here. And the important thing is, how do they relate to the amount of case IDs? So how many of the purchase orders are being executed by just 10 variants? Yeah. In this case, 65%. So most of the cases are already being covered with just 10 variants. And that is the beauty of process mining because if you're seeing here something that derives, you directly have a high impact because you have a high volume of frequency. Yeah. You can derive also the time that is in between. And then you see directly the cost that is attached to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In very simple terms, I prepared a book, a bookmark in order for us all to have it in a smaller scale on one single case instance. Yeah. And for you being able to relate to it. So we have one case that holds five events, yes. of course, just one variant. And then we have the event log that is underlying. So that table creates that visualization. And now comes why we integrate it into Click and why we integrate it to a process analysis, to a data analysis platform. Because we think or we believe that data analytics and process mining comes together. Yeah. Because other process mining vendors on the market, they build up a separate data stack. So they say, we do process analysis. We don't do analytics. We don't do analytics. Okay, now I'm getting what you... Yeah, but you bring it we are doing it all the time. You have a process that is going wrong and you want to know, is it with every product, with every location, with everything that we have? And you need those context information. Yeah. And they are coming from your data analysis data model. You have also your normal KPIs, like in the purchase order, what are the purchase order with high purchase volume, with high discounts? And so on. That is the classical KPI from the data analysis side. Why should you build it again? Yeah. I'm, I'm In the process mining side. Following you completely. Yeah. And now, why is process mining adding the value to data analytics? Data analytics can bring you a lead time. For your process. 
for the entire process. That's yeah. data analytics standard. Mm -hmm. But the question is always be if it, if a KPI changes, why did it change? And where would it originate? And this is where process mining comes from. I can change here my KPIs and I see lead time, granularity, data analytics, minimum, in, the in a complete operation. different level of granularity. You see now exactly where those 375 days are coming from. So if you want to lower, if you want to improve your 335 days, you go to the edge, in this case, 247 days, where you have the most impact. Okay. Yeah, of course, you could improve down here, but the leverage that you have with just 27 days yeah. is way less than with 247. So you know in which step of the process to start, where to, to start, start action, yes. where to initiate yes. the action. That is how process mining and data analytics interact and come mm -hmm. together. Yeah, the, the low hanging fruit, in fact, like we always say. I love it. The, 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 Pareto, <laughs> the, the, the Pareto approach where you say with this, if we can change half this, this time from 247 days uh, and the, then you... The, the impact would be way bigger than the half of 27. Yeah, and you can put the cost very likely next to that or whatever other of, of um, um, element can you put next to that to, to make your judgment correct. What we now want to do is applying what we just saw on your process and your improvement possibilities. So what we just saw is effectiveness. Cases, time. Yes. What is about the efficiency? Automation rate. How, well, how high is the automation rate inside of your process where we do identify potential to save? How high is your rework in the process? What is rework? Rework is basically, did you do one activity more than once inside of one case? Or do we have unwanted activities like change or cancel? Yeah, and that's the rework. Conformance. You were designing a process model like it should be what we can do is we match it automatically with the as-is data. Mm -hmm. So we calculate the conformance of your as-is data versus the should-be wow. with every single process variant. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's impressive. Yeah, and we can jump in, into any of those. If you say that's impressive, let's look at it. <laughs> this, this is what you can do with data and, yeah. and, and visualizing it the correct way and aligning it with your process overall conformance perfect conformance 25 percent process conformance overall 71 and automatically identifying where we go wrong top unnes oops sorry top unnecessary steps so which steps are defined as a should be yeah ah, and which we are using which should not be happening mm -hmm. or the other way around which are designed as a should be and we are not using. So one time, one once. So the here, waste of your process becomes very visible as, as well. Yeah. yeah. So you see directly where along the process chain you must take action. Yeah. Directly. Interesting. Yeah, amazing insights that you can see that in, in such a way by analyzing all the events within your system without yep. even first starting to draw your uh, process maps. That is also, I think, a very important thing because others say, yeah, we are doing it all the time like this. Why should we change? You should change because you're getting objective. You get away subjective. You are actually can calculate cost saving potentials yes. on a real basis, on a real relatable basis. Yeah, no. I show you something. No, no, you say exactly now you re really have the facts and the figures and yeah. it's not a kind of gut feeling where yeah. you think this is the cost saving what we can yeah. do. And, and that is basically then bringing us to the thing where we say, now we do something with it, we execute it. And execution could be automation. Yeah, a lot of people use RPA, yeah. workflow automation. But it can also be that you have a non ergonomic process so the process for the end user is not ergonomic mm -hmm. so you layer a transactional layer bet in between it okay. where you provide the end user all the information that is relevant for making a decision yes and you provide that decision making like for example a very 
good design for eyes principle with interaction possibility between the people, between supervisor and clerk, and so on. Yeah, that could be then execution. That is the next part. And the cool thing is, when you use execution, it of course creates logs. Yeah, and those logs feed back into Frostbite. So yes, this is all about the process, the visualization of your data, capturing the data. So quite interested as well uh, in the fact on how you get to the data and how e it easy it is to connect to the systems with the solution that you built. That is something where where we really leverage the capabilities of Click. So Click is a complete end-to-end -end platform. We said in the in the setting up of our solution, what others needed to do that invented or designed a process mining solution, they needed to address integration, need to address connectivity, integration, data transformation, and visualization. Click does that for us. And, and that integration part um, basically is covered by, by Click. Click has more than 250 connectors to any source system, has the capability to transform all the data, and we leverage that capability. Yes. So key takeaways where people, if they want to start with uh, process mining, where should they start with first actions to do, uh, most gains that they can, can get with uh, the process mining? So, of course, you need to define and to decide what is the use case where you want to start. And that is always a, a difficult question. And I, I like to advise normally, what is the core process for your organization? Where already some work went in, so you know how a process should look like? then it must be to a certain extent digitalized because we can only use digital footprints if there are any. Mm -hmm. And it must be of business relevance. That's why a core process. Yeah. So if, if you're analyzing a process, no one cares. Your CEO will be not convinced to buy it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the end. But that's the, the main thing. And then most importantly, go into the project, not we want to do, we want to analyze everything, we want to see our processes, blah, blah, blah. Narrow it down to certain hypotheses you want to improve. Yeah. Yeah. So formulate three to five hypotheses that you want to prove inside of a POC, for example. Yes. And then just make a hard check within the POC. Do you were able to check or to really validate that hypothesis yeah. that you formulate. Yeah, is it right or is it wrong? That's, that's the approach. What you Were do. you able to do it? Yeah. Okay. Jan, uh, thanks very much uh, for the complete explanation and what your solution is doing. I always wrap up my last interview as well. Data connects everybody, processes connects everybody, but music as well. Mm -hmm. So what is your favorite type of music or favorite band? Wow. So, Oh, like I'm, I'm a little bit a chameleon in that in that case. At the moment, I'm uh, listening to a lot of German hip hop, rap, a little bit old school style. Um, yeah, I, I'm from Germany, but <laughs> <laughs> like on the flight here to Vegas, I yeah, it, it's a little embarrassing, but I will tell it. <laughs> I, I, I I looked uh, the new movie from Whitney Houston. Oh yeah, and I I was coming back to mind that she has just an incredible, remarkable voice, and so absolutely. At the moment, when I'm back in my hotel room, I'm listening to Whitney Houston all the time. Okay, <laughs> great one, great discovery. <laughs> Not only the process that we mind, but your music uh, appetite as well. Jan, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.